President Cyril Ramaphosa speaking a short time ago declaring or announcing the national lockdown of 21 days at the union buildings. Let's go straight to the capital then, bring in ENCA political editor Vuyom Voko, who's standing by for us. So Vuyo, first it was rumoured, then denied, now this lockdown is official. Indeed, uh, that was the case uh, throughout uh, the day. And uh, I mean, we were having this, we've been having these conversations uh, with uh, our colleague and resident analyst, Karima Brown, for the whole day. And we did indeed come to that conclusion much earlier in the day because it was uh, really the only road that uh, the president could take because a national lockdown of uh, the nature he just announced is really the only. Uh, a position that he could take uh, between the national disaster, which is where we are, and a full-on state of emergency. Let's talk, of course, uh, about what this all means. Let me bring you in here, um, Karima Brown. It was indeed uh, the only route uh, that he could, the president could take, wasn't it? Absolutely, we are. I think the president showed enormous leadership today, and uh, South Africa has shown him a lot of patience. He met with all the old players, and if you look at the comprehensive nature of the uh, lockdown and what it entails from every South African who is not an essential worker staying at home for 21 days uh, to uh, the kind of support that uh, business is supposed to give workers, uh, you will see that that consultation was in fact necessary. A raft of measures introduced, starting of course with the fact that people are going to have to be staying at home and it is compulsory. The army will be assisting the police, there will be lockdowns uh, throughout the country and of course um, this is going to affect businesses and he outlined quite a few um, you know, measures that is to mitigate the situation. Ministers will meet at 10 o'clock as we did last week uh, to brief all the different sectors um, as to the specificities of the uh, provisions that have been made for you. Let's go through a few of them uh, very briefly even if it's just um, to recap. Let's start with the most vulnerable including um, the homeless measures there that uh, the government is going to put in place to make sure that they too uh, aren't overlooked or neglected. Absolutely. Well, as I was saying earlier in the day, we saw when the army moved into a place like Craig Hall in Johannesburg, uh, the homeless were already rounded up, hawkers were already rounded up, and the president has made social solidarity a central theme of this uh, plan and uh, very aware that government alone cannot possibly do it. So there's a huge um, push for all uh, participating um, uh, social partners from the churches, religious organizations to the private medical sector as well as big business to come to the party. So we're expecting uh, special buildings to be set aside for uh, these people. We're also looking at uh, water and sanitation facilities. We know that many of our communities are without it. So these are all going to kick in in this period. And then of course the president has um, warned against bulk buying and uh, panic buying saying that uh, supplies are in fact secure and will be kept open. Uh, but I think that it's going to be very difficult uh, to actually go out. We will see tomorrow what the minister says about um, when people can go out and of course which shops they can uh, visit. Normally under a lockdown it's normally grocery shops and pharmacies will. Then there's also um, quite a lot of um, initiatives around small businesses. The president has uh, said that there is a relief fund um, and there's also um, a fund where people can be retrained. Businesses are exempted from paying um, their stipend toward the skill fund, the unemployment insurance fund. Um, there is, um, you know, a, a, a relief for um, employers as well as employees. But I think for me what stood out here was the call from uh, the president on the business sector to not let this burden fall on the working poor in South Africa and those who are destitute. And they do agree with him. I mean, I was here um, a, 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 a couple of days um, ago and as we were, st I mean yesterday, as we were standing right here um, and the business people came forward to say we are actually fully 
behind what the president, what uh, the government has done up until now, and we will back them in what they are going to do next. So extensive uh, consultations uh, were made. I mean, CEOs of uh, the major South African banks were part of that conversation, as well as uh, CEOs of other financial uh, institutions. Absolutely. In fact, the president made a special call on banks. He said that the Competitions Commission rules on banks will be relaxed. So uh, we're expecting the banking sector to make announcements. We've seen uh, some of the banks already coming to the party with small businesses. Um, I'm looking specifically at the issue around bond uh, holidays. Uh, there's also some tax relief for businesses. Um, and I think that those are going to be really impactful, um, especially once those measures start having uh, implications for people who rent businesses, particularly people in the hospitality industry. The service sector in South Africa is a massive uh, area in terms of growth, both from a tourist perspective as well as a hospitality uh, perspective. And they're the measures that are going to be rolled out specifically through the um, Industrial Development Corporation, the IDC, which is, of course, also under the leadership of the Trade and Industry Minister, Ibrahim Patel. He was here a few days ago speaking to you, Vuyo, and I think that those measures are now going to come into effect. Um, the one thing also that I think is important to realize is as our movements get restricted, that um, it is very clear that it is um, about saving lives. It's about um, also testing. One of the things about stopping the movement of people is to allow the state to actually move in uh, with testing facilities. And I think that, in terms of pushing the virus back, is going to be the next big step. We have to upscale testing. Today we saw the numbers rise to 402. And, of course, the amount of testing has now gone up to something like 9,000. We need that to go a lot faster. And more importantly, where we need to get the results of those test packs a lot quicker so that people can actually see whether they are safe and whether we've been able to um, curb the spread of the virus. So I think from a um, health a strategy point of view, that in the next few weeks is going to be absolutely critical. Uh, putting the country on pause, uh, allowing for maximum and upscaling tests and fast tracking those results uh, is for me the most immediate objective that needs to be reached by the health authorities in conjunction, of course, with very senior uh, civil society participation as well as the private health sector. The president also spoke about the Oppenheimer Fund um, and also this important fund that's going to be chaired by Gloria Sarobi and Mr. Enthoven. And I think those details we will get more of tomorrow, but a genuine set of comprehensive measures um, ranging from um, testing right down to making sure that the most vulnerable homeless people on the streets are taken care of we are. So uh, the next few days is going to be critical and all of us will have to make uh, do with what we can and also play our part in trying to stop this virus from spreading. In fact, one of the things uh, the president said right at the beginning was that you don't want to get to a situation where our health facilities will be pushed I mean, to limits that uh, they cannot actually handle. But speaking of uh, social uh, partners, I mean, Kosato did say earlier today that they would be opposed um, to a, a lockdown. One wonders whether, in fact, the raft of measures uh, the president just announced will uh, sort of persuade them to actually, uh, 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 you know, fall in line or, or, or support the range of measures that the president um, just uh, announced. Well, what we've seen uh, before the president um, spoke was also a massive push by civil society organisations coming together, putting forward the issues of uh, poor people, working people, um, and workers in general. And among the things that they have put on their list of demands have, in fact, been incorporated uh, into the President's announcement to the, the nation this evening, particularly around things like sanitation, um, the issue of retrenchments. Uh, the President spoke about people who contract this disease when they are at work that, um, you know, companies need to step forward. So a lot of the fears of working people expressed by Labour Federation such as Kosato and Saftu actually contained in those measures. But I think the devil is going to be in the detail. Wheel. I think tomorrow's press conference at 10 o'clock where the different ministries are actually going to outline 
uh, the measures is going to be of utmost importance. We've already seen um, public sector unions such as Nehao, um, the Minister of Police, admitting that we don't have enough um, you know, protective gear for frontline people. Or our police stations in the country, for example, do not have the necessary uh, you know, pr uh, protective gear that they require. So there's also going to have to be repurposing of our industries uh, to produce things like masks, protective gear, gloves. Um, and we've already seen globally that the developed countries have bulk buyed everything out. We've gotten a fantastic uh, donation from Jack Ma, the Chinese business person uh, who made the donation to Africa. We need to track where those, that equipment is going. But I can foresee that our textile industries, our manufacturers, uh, we've got a great plastics uh, sector in our country. Uh, we've got pesticide companies that can come to the party. And you're going to now see um, people having to do national duty from industry side uh, to make up for the shortages that exist globally where, because we are competing with the likes of England, with France, with everybody for this equipment. So we will really have to look internally and harness the resources that we have here to meet some of the requirements in terms of testing and protective gear for people. In fact, you're spot on because, I mean, uh, I do understand that... Uh uh, you know, getting the state security, uh, uh, I mean, agencies and getting the army and more police involved. Part of the reason uh, that, uh, uh, what, even though it was contemplated initially, but it could not really uh, be part of the package that the president announced uh, last week, was precisely because, I mean, uh, of problems with their state of readiness and including, of course, whether they will get uh, the things, your masks and other things that they would need in the course of doing um, their job. But lastly, perhaps, uh, um, on the question of, uh, you know, civil society cooperation, the president has met with political parties. He has met uh, with uh, 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 religious um, leaders. He is going to meet uh, with uh, trade unions. That meeting was scheduled for tomorrow and later on with the traditional leaders. How important is it uh, for him to get them behind this move? Because even if you send the army and more police you know, into townships and other densely populated um, areas, you still need voluntary cooperation from civil society. Absolutely. If you look particularly at our informal sector, we've got hordes of traders, we've got small traders, we've got um, you know, in every major city, you can go to uh, downtown uh, in Swanee, downtown in Johannesburg, in Cape Town, in Port Elizabeth, everywhere. You've got masses of people in the informal economy. They are loosely organized. So those groups of people also have to be brought in as well as organized labor. So uh, cooperation in places like the mining sector, where people work in very close conditions, uh, where people literally breathe on each other's necks, there the precautions and the shutdown is going to be very, very important. And uh, the question of paid leave is going to be a very sticky point uh, and I think that the leadership across the social compact is going to have to really kick in because the president has shown the way. Government cannot do everything by itself. There are some things that employers and um, the workers will have to come to and the state will obviously have to be the arbiter uh, and the Department of Labor is going to be absolutely critical here. Also the Department of Health uh, to make sure that workers in those sections are actually protected, that their rights are protected and that they can take off. Um, companies are going to have to re-look the issue of sick leave. They're going to have to put people on short staff, um, going to make people work in different hours. So you're actually going to need um, the maximum amount of um, maturity from labor and business. And also, we, we, you need leadership. You don't need brinkmanship at this point from any party. And of course, everybody has to put the national interest first. And the president made a special point about that, that it's not the time for sectoral interest here. We need to put the country first, and I would like to believe that we need to put people before profits at this stage. Okay. And uh, that's where we're going to leave it uh, um, for now. Um, Tim Begile, an important point to make here being uh, that this is not a uh, box ticking exercise. This has to work if we are indeed going to be able to combat uh, the spread of this disease as a nation, and it depends on each and every one of us. Tim
ENCA political editor Vuyomvo Vogo speaking to host of The Fix, also here on ENCA, Karima Brown. They are a team live outside the union buildings in Pretoria. If you've missed it, we are covering this breaking news coming from their president, Sil Ramaphosa, announcing in the last half hour that a 21-day lockdown will begin at midnight on Thursday. I want to just quote for you some of what the president said in that address in making the announcement. He said, and I quote here, it is essential that every person in the country adheres strictly and with without exception to the regulations that have already been put in place and to the measures that I'm going to announce this evening, which he's done. The president goes on to say, our analysis of the progress of the epidemic informs us that we need to urgently and dramatically escalate our response, which is why we are here. So from Thursday, the 26th of March at midnight, only essential service workers will be allowed to leave their homes to make their trips to work. And if you are hoping to head out for medical reasons, for example, those are some of the conditions under which that you will be able to leave your house because only essential movement by citizens will be allowed. South Africa now sitting at 402 cases of this new coronavirus. They're expected to rise by the hundreds.